Good morning. It's 2.30 a.m. on November 16th. I just got an email. Full marathon has been canceled. Are you freaking kidding me? The road to the start of the full course was too icy for it to be safe for vehicles to drive up to it, let alone people running down the mountain. You can't blame Revel for adhering to the Department of Transportation's recommendations. We were supposed to eat hills for breakfast, not icy asphalt. But it was disappointing not to be able to run the full marathon that I had prepped for. I'm feeling like Hermione when Dumbledore announced that he was canceling the end of the year exams. Talk about a curveball. After months of mentally and physically preparing for 26.2 miles, I suddenly had to pivot to running a half marathon instead. Actually, I felt like the entire week leading up to the race was all about pivoting while moving forward. Well, I have some bad news. My left knee isn't feeling so great. I'm starting to have a lot of doubts about my uh, ambitious BQ goal of a sub 335. I'm thinking I'm probably gonna have to reassess my goals here and try to go for something a little bit more manageable, but I am gonna try my best. Icing down my left knee after that seven miler. How about chicken and mushroom dumplings later for lunch, huh? My knee being sore in the last week of training was giving me doubts about my race plan. Good morning. It is November 11th and we are five days away from the Revel Big Bear Marathon. And I'm here on my final speed workout. I'm a little worried about my left knee. I started the run with no pain and now there's a bit of a throb. I thought I'd fully recovered this weekend, but the pain has seemed to come back. Not sure how that's gonna play out on Saturday with, uh, my super patellar tendon or the super patellar bursa being inflamed. I got five days to get it together. So I'm gonna go home, take my profen and ice it. Today's post-workout frozen item is a frozen ground beef. Yum, yum. It doesn't matter if you're running the full or the half, it was going to be chilly at the start. I hit up the Target clearance aisle to look for a throwaway jacket that I would wear in the first few miles. Turns out this throwaway fleece jacket was an even bigger deal. So regularly it goes for $20, then I found it for $14 on clearance, but then at the cash register, it was actually $6. November 13th, three days away from the Revel Big Bear Marathon, and we are here in my kitchen. Things are looking a little too blue. Kind of panicking a bit because this is not what I thought the paint was gonna look like. This was the color that I picked and somehow this is what it looks like when it's on the cabinets. A little too strong. But maybe this is an allegory for race day where things may not go as planned and you gotta make some changes on the spot and we are gonna have to change the paint here because I can't deal with this much blue. Check out my peak week vlog to see the beginning of my kitchen reno. Seriously, I didn't think the lessons I learned about being flexible with the kitchen reno decisions were going to be applicable to the sudden change in race distances. That was not planned. Got my 2023 CIM shirt. Yes, that's the shirt from last year's winter marathon. I'm gonna have to change my goals for this race. So, after talking it over with my coach and him assessing what my nervous levelness is, uh, we decided we're gonna make this more of a PR attempt rather than a BQ attempt. It'll still be a valuable experience for next year because I'm most likely gonna run this race again for next year's P BQ attempt. The plan now was to run a 342 with the first nine miles easy sitting around 840 minutes per mile pace and then dialing it up in the fast second half. I had spent the last few days leading up to the marathon thinking that I would be running at a gentle pace. Maybe it's good that we're changing my race goals, especially since I'm not 100%. I'm maybe mm, 75 to 80%. It's sort of a mindset change along with a physical change. Still, if I can nab a strong PR at Saturday's race, it'll at least give me a good base to work with for next year. No matter what challenges are thrown at you, you have to believe in the process and the training. I was imagining more about the obstacles and fatigue I was gonna face on the full marathon course, not knowing that there was gonna be a different problem in the morning. 
Here we are the day before the race at the Ontario Convention Center here for Bid Pickup and the Expo. What's nice about the Expo being at the Ontario Convention Center is that if you're flying in from out of town, Ontario Airport is literally over there, like less than a mile. But since I'm a local, I just had to drive and pay for parking. A little annoyed about paying for parking, but you know, that's just how it is here in Southern California. Now, looking back at this clip, I noticed the looming storm clouds that would later pound the Inland Empire with torrential rain and contribute to the icy conditions the next morning. How cool is that? The countdown clock. We are less than 20 hours away from start time. I thought the Revel Big Cottonwood Expo was small, but this was even smaller for Big Bear. That's okay. At least that meant that I could get through the Expo quickly. This was the only time I paid for an upgrade. For as much traveling as I do, I won't even pay to upgrade to premium economy. Yet, I paid to be in the VIP tent at the start of the full, which meant a tent to stay warm and private bathrooms and bagels. I hardly ever pay for these things and thought this would be better than standing in the below freezing temperatures. However, I would not get to take advantage of my VIP status because there were no such tents for the half marathon. All right, now I'm gonna check to make sure that my bib is working. Where am I? Oh yeah, see, there I am. Yep, and that's how old I am. What's your favorite post-race food? Mine is ramen, and I would be dreaming of a piping hot bowl while freezing at the start. Before coming to the expo, I had watched a vlog of Casey Neistat hitting a sub three at this year's New York City Marathon, and the message from it inspired me. It's not the UCLA Bruins, but close enough. I guess this is the mascot for Big Bear, right? But my real reason for coming in here early is to hear Coach Paul speak about the course. So it's gonna be 10.30 and we're about 10 minutes away. Coach Paul gave us a mile by mile breakdown of the full marathon course and it was worth it to me to listen to the hour long presentation. Now looking back on it, it should have been a 10 minute presentation with the event change. Oh well, I took notes for next year's race. That was a helpful presentation. So I'm just gonna go through the store here really quickly and then head on out. Haha, <laughs> I remember this shirt from Big Cottonwood and yes, that's how I'm gonna be feeling tomorrow. We have all the usual runner's essentials here. So we have running belts, water bottles, some anti-chafe, memories from September when I did the Big Cottonwood Half. And that's for tomorrow, except I'm doing the full marathon. Huge drop. It was still going to be a huge drop for the half marathon course because the second half of the full course is steeper and without rolling hills like the first part of the full course. I had mentally prepared to run a slow first half. Well, so much for that plan. See what I mean? Ontario Airport is like seriously a mile away. It's only 12 p.m. So that expo, it's small, but you know, they get you in and out pretty quickly and you know, there's plenty of stuff at the store, but most importantly, the talk. I'm gonna go and get about the rest of my day because it is noon. I do plan on going to sleep pretty early because uh, I gotta be up, I guess around one or two because the shuttles leave at 3.15. It's gonna be cold for the first few miles of the race. So this is a more of a maximalist flat lay. I have my neck gaiter, I have my arm sleeves. I actually have two gloves, so these are my cheap gloves from Target, and then these are throw gloves. I'll probably wear that at the start, but I'll wear this on the bus. And my calf uh, compression sleeves, got lots of gels, and plan on taking a lot of salt tabs with me. I have thicker socks because I learned from Big Cottonwood Half that thin socks and my feet downhill, they don't work together very well, and my Vaporfly 3s a lot more gear than I usually wear for a full marathon, but this is different. It's gonna be cold at the start and it's downhill. So I have to think ahead here. To keep me warm on the bus, I'm gonna be wearing this Merino wool, a half zip pullover. This is the same one that I wore to Greenland and it kept me warm. However, at the start, I will be shedding my Merino wool and putting it in my drop bag. And I'm gonna be wearing my $6 uh, zip from Target here a fleece zip so it'll keep me warm for the chilly first few miles. These are some basic sweatpants, um, just 
Hanes uh, fleece, see, just very basic. I plan on donating these at the start line. How nice, they gave us a little beanie, it says Rebel Big Bear on it. Uh, we'll see if I end up keeping this as a souvenir or if I end up throwing it away at the start line. Thanks to my running friend, Carla, who gave me this valuable tip. The ride up there is going to be windy and I tend to get motion sickness easily. I'm gonna bring a few of these ginger chews and yummy, they're lychee flavored. I certainly don't wanna take any maclazine because I'll fall asleep. That was tiring, getting everything together. This course requires a lot more planning than I'm used to. I'm just used to getting, you know, all my gels and my usual long run gear together. But this one required a bit of strategy because we gotta be able to stay warm at the very start. Here we go with the compulsive race morning weather check. I did see snow in the forecast on the afternoon before the race. It made me a bit nervous to think of the possibility about slipping on ice and snow, but I put it to the back of my mind and went to sleep early. I, I can't believe it. It's because it rained yesterday and apparently it's not safe up at the full marathon start. Not really sure what to do. Um, I'm already up. Um, I'm already carb loaded. I already ate my bowl of cereal. There's the option of running the half marathon. I guess that's what I'll do. I don't know. I, I'm just gonna get in the car. Uh, you know, sometimes, you know, driving around kind of helps clear my mind. Uh, I can always turn back and just request for credit for the next race because I'll, I'll most likely do another race with Revel uh, in the future. I was so heartbroken that morning that I didn't read the email closely. Turns out that you can run the half marathon and get credit for a race next year. It wasn't one of those provisions where you have to pick one over the other. Marathon and half marathon. Well, I think I'll go ahead and turn to the marathon parking lot here. It's 3 a.m. and I'm here at the parking lot. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and run the half marathon. This isn't what I had planned for. I kind of had to like, you know, change my mindset as I was driving up here. I actually didn't drive with any music on because I was just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do this morning for the half marathon. Now, some people may say that, you know, what's the big deal? You're gonna run, you know, the half marathon instead of full marathon. So you're only get half beaten up and fully beaten up by the downhill course. It's more than that. I mean, I've spent all year planning to uh, run this race, been training, you know, all summer, despite me traveling all over Europe, and then doing two um, downhill half marathons uh, this year in preparation for this full marathon. Oh well, at least I'm gonna go ahead and run this morning. I'll treat this as a training run for Surf City Marathon, which is coming up in about two months. Plus, it'll give me intel into this race in the future. Uh, if I do the full marathon, at least I'll know what the second half of the course is like. I feel sorry for the people who had their hearts set on achieving a BQ today. At yesterday's expo, there were a lot of people at Coach Paul's seminar, and you could tell everybody was gunning for a BQ. So my heart goes out to them. They gotta be even more disappointed and heartbroken. At least for me, well, this is just gonna be a, a training run for Surf City. Now that my initial outrage was starting to dissipate, I could think more clearly. So how are we catching the shuttle? Now I'm trying to figure out how this whole busing system works. There's a lot of people wandering around. I think everybody's still uh, disoriented from the last minute change in plans. It turns out they still wanted us to line up according to the event we originally signed up for because that's how the buses were lined up. That makes sense to me. At least these coach buses were luxurious. Instead of a winding one hour ride up to the start, it would be 30 minutes on a straight road. Guess I didn't have to worry about getting motion sickness. Oh boy, did the chilly air hit me when I got off the bus. I had expected to warm up in the VIP tents, but there was no such thing at the half start. Okay, this isn't too bad. Apparently it's 42 degrees. I don't think so. I think it's actually a little colder than that because I'll actually you can't see the, uh, the fog, but yeah, I, I think it's a lot colder. Lots of porta potties here. Hopefully they have more porta potties for the marathoners who have joined the half marathoners. I know it's a little early, but I might as well try to use the porta potties right now, but I'll use them again. 
There was something surreal about using the porta potties during the beaver supermoon that was going on that morning. Then I stood around to stay warm in my layers and the Mylar blanket provided in our race bag. We were tired, in shock, and cold. 15 minutes before the start, I put all of my outer layers in the bag, including my $6 Target fleece zip. Hey, since it's not technically freezing at the start of the half, I'm going to save it for another race. All right, I did it. I shed my layers. I'm not wearing my half zip or my jacket or my pants. I just got a tank, shorts, and my arm warmers. It was a cold walk up to the start corrals, and I started questioning my decision to throw my outer layers in my drop bag. I had not anticipated wearing just my racing gear at the start. Yet another thing for my mindset to pivot around. Then I lost my sunglasses as I pulled down my neck gaiter that had kept my ears warm. No such luck. The sunglasses are gone. Whoops. Oh well, I guess I'll squint. As for a race plan, my coach emailed me as I was on the bus and encouraged me to run the half. Little did he know that I was already on the bus. However, we had no reception at the start for me to receive the race plan that he would send to me. Darn it. I was really hoping to run a 145 or a 145 pace group. I'll stand somewhere in between 140 and 150. And I never got reception to see what my coach planned for me. So I'm running without a training plan or, or, or a race plan, actually. Three minutes away from start time. We're just gonna rock and roll down the mountain here. So there I was, no race plan because of course the marathon one was scrapped. I wasn't confident that I could run a 140 with this sudden change in mindset. Remember, I had spent the past few days prepping for a slower start. Sometimes there are literal mountains to climb and then there are the ones in your mind. There was no point in worrying or being upset anymore. I couldn't control the weather or the race director's decision, but I can control my mindset. I decided to focus on giving my all to the half marathon even though this wasn't the race I planned for. Looks like we're moving there, sort of, almost. We're moving, we're moving. This is how we're going to stay warm by moving. All right, going to start. Here we go, here we go. Going down the mountain, see you at the bottom. Time to let go of the disappointment. Time to let go of all the regrets of training in the last six months for a course that I would only run the second half of. Training for a marathon builds resilience, and this situation tested that in a different way. I had to quickly adjust my expectations and goals for the day. Instead of pacing for 26.2, I aimed for a strong, steady 13.1. Flexibility is key, both in running and in life. The original plan had me running the first five miles between 840 to 850 minutes per mile pace. I looked down at my watch and noted that I was averaging around 755 minutes per mile for the first few miles. Oh dear, that was nearly a minute faster than I had envisioned and I was worried that I would cramp in the later miles. For the rest of the course, I ran by effort and kept it relaxed. I felt comfortable staying in the second gear and I did not go past that. Even at the final 100 meters, I stayed cool and coasted to the finish. This was a different kind of finish line. It was a celebration of my flexibility and adaptability. I could have easily thrown away this race and walked most of it or got off course at one of the intersections and ran nine miles to Oakland for its delicious apple pie. This was not an ideal situation, but we were all trying to make the most of it by moving forward. Here are my splits and for the most part, I kept it even. This looks different from my original race plan where I was supposed to average 828. Best of all, I didn't cramp from the unexpected jump in pace. Which metal do I get? A half or a full? Well, okay, I'll just take whatever they give me at this point. Great job. Thank you. There was a sense of camaraderie at the finish line because we had survived the demoralizing news this morning and made the best out of this sticky situation. I guess I might as well get refreshments. It's so weird because I still have energy because I was, you know, fueled up for a full. Uh, maybe not as ice cloth today. It's still a little chilly. Oh, might as well get some water. It's amazing how post-race snacks can wipe away any negative feelings you may have. I did wish they had bags like they did at Cottonwood. Going with the theme of adaptability, I used my side pockets to store the goodies. Why not, since they were no longer carrying my race gels. I see a sign there for sweet treats and I still got room in my pockets.
Yeah. I'm not putting this in my pockets. I'm gonna eat it right now. This is the cool part about the Rebel Race that they print your results on a postcard. Here's another curveball. My results card said I ran the half in 142.42. However, later on the website, it said I ran 142.50. Look, I'm not gonna make a fuss over eight seconds. I still ran a 750 average and beat my time at Big Cottonwood in September. I got to collect the double Reveler medal for running in two Rebel races in the same calendar year. Eventually, I did make contact with my coach when I had reception at the finish line. Turns out that he had sent me a plan to run 140, which I think I might have gotten close to if I went from second gear to third gear. Oh well, I was more pleased that he had confidence in my current level of fitness. Look ahead, because this is a rare sight in Southern California in November. It's the snow-capped mountains. Wow, were we supposed to run in that if the marathon hadn't been canceled? She just gave me my bag. I didn't even have to stand up there and tell my number. She just saw me coming. I'm glad I didn't throw this away at the start. I just shoved it into my bag. There's nobody in line for the 26.2 because that didn't happen. However, there's a lot of people waiting for the 13.1. The line for the shuttle to take us from the finisher area to our parking spot was long because of the sudden influx of runners. Nobody anticipated this many runners finishing at this time in the morning, but I stayed patient. The volunteers were working just as hard to accommodate this sudden change. This street looks different in broad daylight than at 3 in the morning. That is amazing how much I was able to store in my side pockets. My knee is holding up okay. I did have some pain and I ended up having to stop over either mile eight or mile 10 to put some of this uh, muscle lotion that they had on. Didn't really do anything, but I still got down the mountain, so it's all good. What a day, what a day. Talk about having to pivot there. In the end, it all turned out to be fine. Uh, it's actually not a big deal for me because I wasn't going for a BQ, I was going for a PR. Uh, even though this wasn't really a PR for me, I guess it is a PR for the Revel Race Series because it is a huge improvement over my time at Cottonwood. It's almost like three minutes. That's still pretty significant considering that this was a last minute thing, so I wasn't really in the right mindset to run a certain time. Turns out my coach did send me a race plan, except I couldn't receive it because I didn't have any reception at the start, but it was close enough. I guess the main lesson here is it just to keep moving. Uh, life is gonna give you plenty of obstacles and you learn how to deal with it. Or more like the best of the situation. So making lemonade out of lemons. It was a good experience. If anything, I got a good long run. It also gives me intel for what the second half of the course looks like in case I wanna run the marathon again next year. Sure, it's disappointing not to be able to run the race that you've trained for for months, but at the end of the day, you have to remember you gotta keep safety in mind. If they can't get the cars up there and the Department of Transportation is like, no, then there's no way that it would have been safe for us to come down the mountain at that ele elevation. It was a good time trial and a good gauge of what my level of fitness is. Now, remember, I didn't go 100% because I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I just wanted to get the run done today to the best of my abilities. And besides, I think their policy was pretty generous. So we all got to run the half marathon today. I still got to pick up a full marathon medal because that's what I signed up for. And if I read the email correctly, I think I can apply for um, credits for the next Revel race or uh, one of the other races that Brook C sponsors. They did give us credit and they did refund the cost of my VIP tent entry to my credit card. As Coach Paul says, I love Revel races. I hope to be able to run this race next year. Hopefully there won't be a freak rainstorm like there was yesterday. There was a lot of rain just came out of nowhere. So that's what contributed to the icy conditions. I've been watching the weather all week and I didn't anticipate that there was gonna be any snow. I was just more worried about being very cold up there. The full marathon medal isn't about running 26.2 miles, 
but it's a reminder of all those long runs we had completed to get to the start line. It's not so much about the results, but the process. Those early mornings didn't go to waste. Remember how I wrote down that ramen is my favorite post-race meal? Turns out my favorite ramen place had a long line, so I went to an udon restaurant instead. Hey, it goes along with the theme of pivoting according to the situation, and that was some hearty udon. As for my kitchen renovation, we made changes to the paint color after seeing how our original choice didn't pan out. I love this new color and can't wait to see the finished product. Like I said, doing a kitchen renovation is an allegory for life. Life doesn't always go as planned, and when we roll with the punches, we can still find success and joy in the unexpected. Even though I didn't get the marathon finish I was hoping for, I got something just as valuable. A reminder that running is about perseverance, adaptability, and community. See you in a couple of months at Surf City Marathon, and I hope to show off my new kitchen then.